Uh, from the National Weather Service in Raleigh, it's Nick Petro with your uh, briefing here, 1130, Thursday, March 18th. Uh, severe thunderstorms expected across central North Carolina today. And uh, what has changed, and of course, um, the foggy, cool start to the day, uh, appears like it's going to be um, uh, provide a, a slight delay, if you will, in the severe thunderstorm risk. It won't eliminate um, it, it won't eliminate the uh, risk for severe weather, and um, but but certainly um, it, it's going to put a slight delay here. So anyway, I uh, just wanted to note real quick a couple folks um, posting here still in the question box. Um, I'm assuming the audio is back and the handouts. Unfortunately, um, I haven't been able to um, update the. Uh, the handouts in the handout section. So the handout section um, now is blank. So because uh, it did have uh, 430 slides from yesterday. So I apologize for that. OK, great. So let's go ahead and and, um, and move on. Uh, of course, uh, you you probably woke up this morning, saw the, the gray skies, the fog, the mist. Um, and again, like I said, that that's uh, just putting a, a, a delay, if you will. We're not out of the woods. The severe risk is still there. It's just um, it's just getting a slower start. Okay, so, um, uh, and of course, with the cooler uh, air over the triad, the Storm Prediction Center has uh, trimmed back the level four severe weather risk, the moderate. It's now basically from Fayetteville uh, east and south. Okay, now that doesn't mean that places like Raleigh, Chapel Hill, Greensboro are out of the woods. Okay, it just means that the uh, risk the the, the um, risk for the worst of the severe weather would be basically in that red area. All right, so let's uh, go on to um, current conditions because I think this will convey a lot better what is going on right now. And what I'm displaying here currently are uh, temperatures and the radar. Okay, and just for in case you're wondering, here are the current watches. Uh, the watch watch the the only watch that I'm seeing right now is down across southern uh, Georgia. Okay, now I, we have heard from the Storm Prediction Center, um, and, and you may have seen this in their severe weather outlook, uh, their mesoscale discussion, that uh, you know they are um, considering additional watches further north. Um, so do look for uh, a new watches to be issued as the uh, morning and afternoon wear on. But those are the only um, watches in effect right now. I do have warnings, uh, the warning box highlighted, and I'm not seeing any warnings right now, okay? Now, here's the part of the storms that I am focusing on. Remember yesterday, yesterday at 4.30 briefing, we said that we're gonna be keeping an eye on a couple different things, one of which was gonna be the temperature and the, 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 the degree to which the fog and temperatures hold back storms. And then another thing I said I'd be watching is storms upstream and as uh, watching to see how they evolve as they approach North Carolina. This is the batch of storms that I am watching right there, okay? So if you see that circled area, that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. The other thing I'm focusing on is where the boundary is, the boundary bef between um, warm air and cool air. Look, look at the difference here, Franklin versus uh, uh, Rocky Mounts, 655 on one side of the boundary, 61 on the other. Look at this um, 56 at Lee County um, and 63 there, um, uh, Harnett and, and Cumberland County. So there's a boundary in there. OK, and you'll see there's some 50s, uh, upper 50s and lower 60s versus uh, mid mid 60s. There's a 51 there uh, near Greenville, uh, uh, South Carolina versus a 63 just to the south. So if I extend this, there is a warm front right in there. OK. And it's on this boundary that storms like to, um, you know, like to uh, focus on, if you will. So as these storms right here encounter this boundary, that's where we think that the risk for severe weather will uh, greatly increase. Okay. Now, if you're up in Greensboro uh, or points north and west, you're saying, "Well, I'm sitting here in the low 50s. I'm in good shape." Well, maybe, maybe not. You know. Um, because this boundary here is going to continue to move northwest. The question is, by later this afternoon, when this batch of storms gets to our area, where is this boundary going to be? If this boundary doesn't move, then yeah, folks in Greensboro and the Triad, you're fine. You wouldn't see any severe weather, right? 
But if this boundary moves west and sets up over here, then absolutely the severe weather risk will extend back to the triad, okay? Or will it just set up somewhere in between? Like yesterday, we were talking the US-1 corridor. So the question, and let me, let me clear out all these uh, drawings here. The question is, is where does this boundary that's basically right here, how much further west does it move? Where does it set up? Okay, right now we're thinking the most likely place for it to set up is somewhere in here. Okay, that's where we think this boundary is going to, as far west as it's going to move. It might get to Greensboro still, or it may be just to the east of Greensboro. But, and I'll, you know, right now it's hard to say. But when these storms here move east and interact with this boundary, that's where we think uh, some storms are really going to fire up and get going, and maybe even some rotating storms that could produce large hail, damaging straight line winds, and who knows, maybe even a tornado or two. Okay, so there's a, another way that I can convey this uh, to you, and that is let me remove the radar. Let me remove the watches, the LSRs, the warnings, the current conditions, and let me plot on here. Um, let me plot on here simulated reflectivity. Okay, so bear with me here while I uh, set this up. Um, I'm loading, what I'm loading here is uh, basically forecast radar, what the radar may look like. If I can get my uh, mouse to uh, properly work here. And here is one of many scenarios, okay? Uh, this is one particular model that generally does pretty well. And let me just forward to right now. What time is right now? So now it's 1540Z. So this is uh, roughly 16Z, you know, 15 minutes from now. And let's just step this forward to 2 p.m. this afternoon. This is 2 p.m. So clearly this model shows no storms at all anywhere in central North Carolina by 2 p.m. Okay, this is 4 p.m. Okay, and you could see, notice that line that I was focusing on, how it's now splitting up and you're starting to see some red, some red taking shape, some deeper, uh, more, you know, stronger cells. Let me zoom in and let me uh, move forward. That is 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Okay, so it's much lighter. But what this suggests is that that boundary that I pointed out earlier is going to set up somewhere right in here, okay? Almost right along the US-1 corridor, like we were talking about yesterday, okay? So, um, so if that particular scenario plays out, then as we talked about yesterday, 30 miles either side of US-1, these storms could move across and, uh, and, and produce some, some severe weather impacts. Perhaps even a tornado could be embedded in this. Now, the, the, the main change is it's a little bit later, okay, later today, all right? And then as I move forward, notice what happens, that those cells continue to move north along the US-1 corridor, and then they start to, to move east of the US-1 corridor, okay? And they could be severe all the way to 95, as this, as, as this uh, radar simulation suggests. The time here on this particular um, simulation, this time stamp right here would be... Uh, 9 p.m. this evening. So let me back it up here. And this is basically the current time right now. We're watching the activity in Georgia. And then it moves east. And then it interacts with that boundary and it really starts to fire up those storms. Basically, eastern Stanley County, Anson County, Montgomery County, Moore County. And then they really blow up over uh, uh, northeast uh, Moore County, Chatham County, Lee County, move across Wake County, all the way up to Henderson. And then, um, and then, and then move east across uh, the I ninety five corridor. All right. So that's one scenario. In this particular scenario, our folks, uh, friends in the Triad, Greensboro, Forsyth County, uh, you'd be fine. Okay. It would happen that that boundary wouldn't get to you. Okay. Now that's one scenario. Let me show you a different scenario, which shows that boundary pushing even further west. Okay. So this scenario is kind of here's right now. Um, here is 2 p.m. So again, this model also suggests, you know, we're pretty much in the clear through 2 p.m. today, 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. And look how um, it more or less shows uh, storms really amping up, but maybe just a little bit further west than that prior simulation I showed you. So in this particular scenario, you know, in the 5 p.m. time frame, even the triad is under the gun at this point in time, okay? And then let me move forward. This would be 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 
8 p.m. So the triangle region, you're really not really getting into it until this evening. All right. And then the I-95 corridor doesn't look terribly bad there. OK, so so one thing you'll notice is this has not deviated in, in this particular scenario. It's a little bit further west where it spins up. Let me back up here. This is a uh, this is uh, 4 p.m. So it develops in terms of severe potential a little bit further west, including the triad. But then it really kind of gathers uh, together just west of the U.S. one corridor. All right. So. So really, to, to, to quite frankly, it hasn't really our thinking from yesterday hasn't really changed. We're still thinking that the U.S. one corridor, either side of it, perhaps maybe a little bit further west than we were thinking yesterday, possibly the eastern triad. It just depends on where that boundary sets up that we were talking about, okay? Um, and then once these storms form, then they're formed, and then they just continue to take advantage of the warm air as they move east across the uh, I-95 corridor. So places like Fayetteville, Dunn, Goldsboro, Rocky Mount, you're still, you know, you still have potential to see severe storms. It's just they will have already been formed to your west, and then just the, the, the leftovers move across. Okay, so... Uh, but that probably won't happen until well into the evening hours. So if you're along the I-95 corridor, we're talking uh, much later than what we were uh, originally thinking. OK, so um, so anyway, I hope that uh, scenario, uh, those those scenarios uh, help uh, convey um, how we think this is going to play out. One more time. Here's current radar and here's current conditions. Um, so we are in good shape for now. And it's just all about. It's all about where this particular boundary that you see, uh, how this develops, and how these storms that you see over upstate South Carolina and just south of Asheville, how they blow up when they interact with uh, with this uh, boundary. And the and the expectation is is by late afternoon, this boundary is probably going to be somewhere in here, uh, maybe maybe a little bit further east, but somewhere in this part of central North Carolina that boundary is gonna be uh, set up, all right? And that's where we expect these storms here to really get going is when they intersect that boundary. Again, somewhere in this general area, we think um, the, the storms will really, really fire up along that boundary. But again, later, late this afternoon and early this evening, all right? So I hope that uh, helps. And um, I'm gonna try to package all this up what I just conveyed into slides and email out that out to everybody okay so that that'll take a little bit of time um but basically to kind of summarize it uh, you know the what is numerous to numerous strong to severe storms today when uh, mainly uh this should be late afternoon through this evening um where all of central north carolina can experience severe thunderstorms today but again somewhere along the us1 corridor maybe a little bit further west is where we think it's really gonna uh, have the worst of the storms um, with highly damaging straight line winds, large hail, maybe a few uh, uh, tornadoes or two, um, numerous down trees and power lines, power outages, structural damage are all possible with those, with the worst of the storms, okay? So um, yeah, with that, um, that's, let, let me, since normally we do a, a, a weekly briefing, uh, at 1130 on Thursday. Let me just run through this real quick, just in case anybody's wondering what happens after we get through with today. After we get through with today, there's going to be some light rain that moves across our area on Friday. Not a big deal. It's actually going to turn quite cooler. And there's some models that show a few snowflakes, uh, wet snowflakes mixing in near the Virginia border uh, tomorrow uh, midday. Uh, not a big deal. Don't worry about that. Otherwise, dry and cooler this weekend as high pressure noses down from the north. Low pressure will stay off the coast this weekend, keeping that high pressure over us in northeast, cool northeast flow. Um, and then the next chance for rain will be a cold front uh, later next week. All right. And again, much of the seven day rainfall for central North Carolina will fall today. And then um, looking further down the road, uh, the Climate Prediction Center suggests above normal uh, chances for rain with above normal uh, temperatures in that. Uh, March 25th to March 31st time frame. All right. So um, so anyway, that is how we uh, see things um, setting up uh, for the rest of today. Again, we're we're just getting a slightly later start. 
We're not out of the woods yet. We still think the somewhere along the US-1 corridor um, to um, uh, maybe a little bit further uh, uh, west is where the storms will kind of really uh, get going, if you will. All right, so uh, so keep, keep up to date with updates. Uh, this will probably be our last live webinar, although I will be updating the slides and, and sending them out uh, periodically throughout the day to keep you updated, okay?